In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to use Blender's built-in Sky HDRI environments. So these HDRI environments which are built into Blender are quite as realistic as using real image HDRIs, but they can still be pretty useful. And then at the end of this video, I'll be demoing a really cool Blender add-on called Physical Starlight and Atmosphere, which is an amazing Blender add-on for getting realistic skies and sky lighting. So to use Blender's built-in HDRI environments, you want to go here to the World Properties, and what you want to do is click on the yellow dot here next to Color, and then you want to go down here to Sky Texture. Let's hold down the Z button and go up into the Rendered Viewport mode so we can see the texture. And also this will work in Cycles and EV, so you can use whichever one you want. I'm going to switch it over to EV so that it's actually in real time, so it's a bit easier to see the environment. Now what I also want to do is I want to hit the N key to open up the side panel and I'm going to click here on view and then I'm going to take the focal length and just turn the focal length down. So now you can see it kind of gives us like a fisheye effect but this will allow us to see more of the HDRI. Also what I'm going to do is click here on the overlays and just hide the floor here so that looks a bit nicer. Now you can edit the sky settings on the side panel in the world properties but what you can also do is click in the corner and click and drag to split the window. You can click to change the editor type and you can change it to the shader editor and then instead of using the shading nodes you can actually click right up here and change it to world nodes. So the world in Blender also has nodes. It's sort of like its own shader so you can use this if you want to but I'm just going to be using it on the side panel here. So I'm just going to click here, drag drag over and then let go just to close that node editor. I'll just be using the side panel. Now on this sky texture, there are these three different types here. And these names here are the last names of the creators who created these sky textures, which are built into Blender. And I'll have a link in the video description to this page here on the Blender manual. So you can see there's different sky types and there's also these links here if you wanna learn more about the people who created these different sky types. So let's click here to change the type and I'm gonna to go to the first type, which is the Predom. So with the Predom type, you can see there's kind of this nice light blue right here, then it almost looks like there's kind of like a sun which is on the very top and then right down here there's just kind of like a slightly peachy color. Now what you have is this little circle here and you can click and drag this circle around and that is going to change where the sun is. So you can kind of see it looks like there's a little bit of a sun there. It's kind of blurry but if I kind of drag this around that's going to change where the sun is. So if I drag this really far like this now it's kind of looking like evening. So it looks like the sun is kind of going down over the horizon and then it's evening. As I turn it down more and more it kind of gets blue. So this kind of looks like the like the blue hour or this kind of looks like dusk. Now what you could also do is animate this circle value. So what I'm going to do is just hit the I key with my mouse hovered over that circle. Then I'm going to move along the timeline to a different spot and then I can just kind of rotate this all the way over like this till maybe about noon and then hit the I key again. So now if I go back to the starting and play this you can see we have kind of a cool sunrise animation. Now one quick thing that I want to do to make this a bit more contrasted is I'm going to go here to the render properties, scroll down and on the view transform I'm going to use filmic and on the look I'll change this to very high contrast so you can see things look a bit more contrasted. Now there's also this turbidity here which is kind of going to change the look of the atmosphere. So you can see if I turn all the way down to zero it's like very bright and then kind of blue. You can see if I turn the turbidity really high now it kind of looks more hazy. And then there's also a strength here which is gonna just going to be like a brightness. So if you wanted it to maybe look more like evening you could turn the brightness down. So let's change this to the next type, which is the Hosex slash Wilkie. And you can see it's still using some of the other settings from the previous sky texture. So I'm just gonna delete the world, add a new world. And on the color right here, I'll change this to the sky texture. And then right here, I'll change this to Hosex Wilkie. So we have a fresh new file. So this one I like a lot better because you can see the colors just look quite a bit nicer and things are a bit more sharp. And you can also see the horizon. So again, there is this sun rotation. So let me just kind of move up here so I can see this. So I can just drag this around and this will move the sun around so I can make it look like evening. You can see as I start to like turn this down, you can see now it looks like evening. It's kind of orange. So we have some sunset colors or sunrise colors. We also have this value here, which is going to also control like the atmospheric look. So if I turn it up, it's going to be like really white. I like keeping it kind of in the middle. So it's kind of blue or turning it way down, but the sun will start to disappear if you turn it too far down. Then there's also the ground all beto and from the blender manual, this reads the amount of light reflected from the planet surface back into the atmosphere. 
atmosphere. So you can see if I turn this up, it kind of is adding like more reflections. If I turn this down, it's just kind of a bit darker. And then there's also the strength to change the brightness. Let's click here and change it to the last type, which is the Nishida. And so for this one, you can see the sun disk is not available for Eevee. So let's just go here to the render properties and we'll change it back to cycles and go back to the world settings. So there is a sun disk. It's a little bit hard to see right now because it's really bright, but you can start turn the sun disk on and off. If I turn the sun intensity way down, there's not gonna be quite as much sharp light. And I can also change the size of the sun. So let's just turn the sun up really big so you can kind of see it. So now you can clearly see there's that sun there, but it's really bright, um, but that's way too big of a sun. So I'm just gonna turn that down a bit. Then you can also move around the sun by changing the elevation and rotation. So I can just turn the elevation up. So now it's kind of like noon. And then I can also rotate it around and then you can change the elevation if you want it to be like midday or evening or morning. Now again, because it's so bright here and it's a little bit hard to kind of actually see what the HDRI is looking like, I'm gonna jump down here to these settings. So there's air, dust, and ozone. So I'm gonna turn the ozone way up. And then for the air and the ozone, I'm just gonna turn this down to a sm pretty small value like that. So now you can see things a lot better. You can definitely see that sun there. So I might change the sun size and make it a lot smaller. Then there's also the altitude value. So this is gonna be like how far you are up in the sky. So you can see as I'm dragging it, it's not really changing anything. That's because I need to add more dust and air. So if I add more dust and air, now I can change the altitude and the altitude is making it look a bit different. I don't find the altitude value that useful. So I usually just don't use it, but the air, the dust and the ozone is quite useful. So what I'm gonna do is hit the backspace with my mouse hovered over these values to bring it back to the default. And I'm gonna show you my personal favorite settings. So I like changing the air and the dust to two and then the ozone all the way up to 10. And then here on the sun size, I'm gonna change this to a 10. And then here on the sun elevation, I'll also turn this to a 10. So now you can see the sun is really low and because we've turned up some air and some dust, but a lot of ozone, it looks nice and blue. So we get this really nice sky environment here, but then it kind of looks like maybe it's evening or morning. And if I turn the sun elevation all the way down and then slowly start to turn it up, you can see we're getting this really cool animation here of like the sun setting or the the sun rising and I actually have a tutorial where I use this to create a sunset animation. It's an older tutorial which I created quite a few years ago but if you want to check it out I'll have the video link in the description and I create a cool sunset animation in that tutorial. Now, as well as this sky texture, there is another built-in Blender extension, which has some sky settings. So I'm gonna delete this world here, and then I'll click on edit, and I'll go to Blender's user preferences. And what I'm gonna do is go over here to get extensions, and I'll click on the search extensions, and I'm gonna type in sky, and here's the dynamic sky. So just click here and install the add-on if it's not already installed. And then here on the add-ons, if you search for sky, just make sure you turn on the dynamic sky, and then you can also save Blender's user preferences if you want to use it in all your projects. So I'll close the user preferences. Now to get to the dynamic sky, you need to hit the end key to open up the side panel and you need to click on the create tab. And then here on the create tab, there is dynamic sky and I'll just click on create. Now you can see nothing changed. That's because we need to click on the drop down here and then you can see it's created the dynamic sky. So let's click on this just to add it in. So with this sky, there's some clouds. So that is pretty cool. And so you can change like the brightness. There's also shadow color saturation. So if I turn this up, you can can see like the shadows are a lot darker. I usually don't play around with that setting. And then there's some like colors. So there's the sky color. Maybe I'll make this like a deeper blue, the horizon color. So maybe this would be cool to make it like maybe a green color if it's like a grassy field or like a brown. And then also the clouds color. You can also make the clouds more invisible by turning down the opacity of the clouds. So I think I might like that a little bit better. And then also the clouds density. And I kind of like turning that up a bit because it makes it look a bit more detailed. But as you can see, these clouds definitely don't look that realistic. It kind of just looks like a noise texture. And actually, if I jump over to the shading workspace, click on the object and change it to world. Let's zoom out here. You can see it's actually using Blender's nodes here. So it's actually using the node system and it is using the noise texture. So if I go back to the layout, it is using the noise. So it's not that realistic, but this could still be useful if you're just trying to quickly get a quick sky for your scene. And then there's also a few sun settings hit down here on the bottom. So just like the other sky settings that we went over, you can drag the circle here and that's going to move the sun around. 
So what I'll do is just click on the exit here to get rid of that sky, and I'll add a new sky, and I'll click here on the yellow dot next to color, and I'm gonna choose the sky texture again. And I'm gonna change some of the settings again just to get the settings back to the settings that I like. Now I did mention that over here on the shading workspace, if you click here on the shader type, you can use world, and you can actually use the world nodes. And so what's really useful about this is that you can add different textures, you can do color correction, and just do a lot of different things. So for example, I could go to the add menu and search for the brightness and contrast and I could use this to change like the contrast you can see the colors kind of look more saturated and also the brightness I could also add like the RGB curves let's drop this here and I could use the RGB curves to like adjust the color so I could add like more red or less red so that's useful for adjusting the color I also have the strength value here and then another thing which is really useful about using the shader nodes is you could also create some procedural stars so I've added a new sky texture I'm using preham and I've also just dragged to the back here so it kind of has this dark blue so it kind of looks like the blue hour or dusk now what I'm gonna do is create a Voronoi texture and I'll just control shift select the Voronoi texture to preview it and I'm gonna turn the scale up and then what I'm gonna do is search for a color ramp and drop this here so I can now drag the white tab over and the black tab over and I'm gonna switch the value so it's mostly black but it has a little bit of white and then just turn up the scale and you can now see we've created some cool stars now to mix the stars into the sky texture what I want to do is just control Control shift select the background and let's just drag these back here so now what I can do is search for the mix color to mix two colors together so I'm going to take the color ramp and put that into the factor and so then color B can be the color of the stars so I'm gonna make this fully white so the stars are white and then the sky texture can go into color a so I'm gonna now change the render engine over to Eevee so it's gonna play in real time or show up in real time and now you can see we have some cool procedural stars and it looks like it's dusk and we kind of have that that blue hour effect when it's dusk so that's just one example of how you can create your own procedural sky environment. Now at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that I was going to show you a really cool Blender add-on for creating realistic skies and sky environments, and that's the Physical Starlight and Atmosphere add-on. So it's a really great Blender add-on, and I can highly recommend it, and I do have an affiliate link to the add-on, so if you're interested in purchasing, you can use my affiliate link in the description and purchase on the Super Hype Market and help support the channel. And I also have a full add-on review video, so if you want to check out the review video, the link is in the description. So once you install the add-on, you can hit the end key to open the side panel and you can click down here on the atmosphere tab and then you can just click on add atmosphere and you can already see this environment looks really cool we have some really realistic clouds and you can see that the add-on also adds a sunlight and the sunlight is actually going to be the direction of the sun so I can rotate the sunlight and you can see it's going to like animate the time of day so an easy way to rotate the sun is to just double tap the R key and that's going to use the trackball rotation so I can make it like noon so you can see now it's like midday or I can turn it down and as I turn it down it's gonna start to you know be later in the afternoon and then the evening we get some really cool colors here now what's so cool about this add-on is it's super customizable so there are first some presets here so I'm just gonna click through some of the presets you can see when I click on the preset it takes a moment to load up that's because I'm using the EV rendering engine so now it's loaded up it would probably load up faster with cycles but I really like using EV because I can see it in real time but once it's loaded up it's pretty fast in the viewport so there's this earth 2 one there's also like a thick fog one so let's just rotate this over so that's pretty cool there's a hazy summer so that is really cool so I'm gonna double tap the R key use trackball rotation now when I created the add-on review video a few years ago these presets here were actually assets in blenders asset browser so you had to install them as an asset library and then drag and drop them into blender but with the new update of the add-on you don't need to worry about using the asset library or anything you can just click here through the presets which makes it even more useful there's also this cool Tatooine one and so for this one there's two suns so it looks like Tatooine and Star Wars. There's also a cool retro wave one. This is pretty cool for creating some cool like futuristic kind of stylized scenes. I created a tutorial where I used geometry nodes and created this scene here. If you want to check it out, I'll have a link in the description. There's also a Mars preset. So this is very cool because it is kind of blue, but it looks really kind of gray and brown and hazy, kind of looks like Mars. So there's a bunch of cool presets, but then there's also so many different settings. So you can change like the different sun settings. So you can move this around if you want to with these values. And 
And there, you can also change like the temperature of the sun. There's also atmosphere settings. So just so many settings you can play around with. I can turn up this density and it looks like I'm adding fog. There's also some star settings. So if I just make this look like nighttime, you can see there's some stars here and I can turn up the intensity of the stars. So that's very cool. And there's even a bunch of cloud settings. So I can change the random sea the clouds. I can change the scale of the clouds and the thickness. So, so many settings you can play around with. So again, if you're interested in purchasing the add-on, then I will have my affiliate link to the add-on on the Superhive Market in the description. So that'll wrap it up for this video, so I hope you found the tutorial helpful, and thank you for watching.